Elites, listen up, pull up, pull up, really quick here. Uh, we have a monster, a beast, an untamed wild animal. This thing is a monster. We need to act swiftly, quickly, and tame this boy before it does anything bad, anything unpredictable. Hey, buddy, watch the movements, watch the movements, let's go. Seeds, eat them, three seeds, perfect. You're not expensive at all, not expensive at all. You're also mine now, I'm not afraid of you. Get on the shoulder, get on the shoulder, get on the shoulder. Okay, fine, fine, all right, get on the land. Get on the shoulder. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's right, Elites. It's me, your boy, and a parrot this time. Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number 22. We have yet another pet. This pet needs a name. Hook me up down in the comments below, but only if you leave a like. Only if you leave a like. That's very important. Parrots, what are they for? Well, in all honesty, they're basically good for nothing. They are cool looking, though. They come in a couple different colors. Uh, they make noises. The noises are kind of interesting. They mimic mobs that are nearby, like hostile creatures but uh, also um, this is just kind of annoying it, it kind of just causes this weird anxiety that you don't even need so yeah parrots basically good for nothing but they dance to music which is pretty sweet hey come on come on come on come on you come with me also don't feed carrots cookies you don't want to know what happens Parrots can also sit on your shoulder, which is kind of cool, but if you jump, the parrot falls off of your shoulder. A little bit of a bummer. Now, unnamed bird creature. I need you to go over here on the land and sit next to the cats. Cats do not eat the bird. Thank you very much. So, at least I've done some movement in between episodes. In between episodes, I went back to the starter base. I moved all of the supplies that I think we're gonna need for today's build over to this spot right here. In the series, we built a crop farm. It was a decent crop farm. We talked about some of the mechanics, but you know what that crop farm wasn't? That crop farm wasn't great. Today, we're gonna level up our farm game. We'll be setting up a partially bee-powered crop farm. This crop farm should grow a little bit faster and be able to be harvested sooner than the other crop farm. If nothing though, this farm will look better than the last one and it'll give us enough wheat to breed our cows so we can get beef in no time. But we live in a jungle, which means uh, things are in the way. I think I need to kick off today's episode with a little bit of clearing. So I'm going to go ahead and craft an iron axe, chop down this tree, this tree, and maybe clear out some of these leaves as well. While I'm clearing out the leaves, I'll actually probably grab the leaves and keep them. These leaves are going to come in handy big time down the road when we want to decorate and make things look really, really good. I need to actually clear out a pretty decent sized area here for the farm that I'm thinking. Of course, this farm will be the best shape in the world. Um, more on that in a minute, though. First, I need to get these trees out of here. Oh, and uh, cocoa beans. Hey, hello. That's amazing. And while I wait for some of these leaves to clear out, I'm going to do a little bit of terraforming. This land is going to be really hard to work with for what I have in mind. I think I need to pull some of this land up and some of this land down. Don't know how much, though, so I'll just get started on it. All right, here we go. I'm pretty sure that I'll actually end up having to clear out more land. The space isn't all that big, but this is enough space to start, which is all we need. Minecraft bees are very, very interesting. Not only are they absolutely adorable, uh, we're gonna have to give these guys a second. I think they have to get out of this thing. Well, we wait, we can't actually go, oh, never mind. Hey, there you are. Okay, there's one bee. Come on, all I need is one more bee. Not only are bees absolutely adorable, I mean, come on, look at this creature, but they actually have a function too. So of course they can be used to make honey and honeycombs, but you can actually use bees that are pollinated, meaning they have the little particle effects on them, to speed up your crop growth. That is exactly what we're going to do. So with this farm, bees will basically be king. We'll have a couple bee nests up at the top, and then we'll put flowers on the outside. In the middle, we'll put crops. The crops will grow, the bees will fly over the crops to get to the flowers, they'll pollinate, and then they'll fly back. When they fly back over the crops, the crops growth will be sped up a little bit. So we have a brand new baby bee. That's actually the first baby bee of our world. Now we need to create a home for the bee because beehives and bee nests can only hold three bees at a time. So here we go. This is an extra beehive. We'll place it down for now. We'll worry about trying to not make the bees angry later on. You can, yep, there you go, go into there. So technically for this to work, we could place a couple beehives right here on the ground around this cow farm and then put crops in the middle and then flowers on the outside, then it would work. But that's not exactly the vibe that I wanna go for. I think it would be cool to put the bees up high. So what we're gonna do is create a platform. I think this platform could maybe be like three blocks out from that cow thing in every direction. So one, two, three, and then maybe over here, one, two, three, and then finally right over here, boom, uh, no, boom, right there, called it. Okay, so that'll be the base to our platform. Then I think this thing should probably go up uh, a little ways. How far? 
E that's a good question. You know what? Let's make some spruce staircases. Spruce staircases are going to help big time. So, uh, today is kind of a special day. This is the first time you're going to actually get to see the build style that I'll be building over here. Now, I'm not really going to say exactly what this build style is going to be, but maybe. Maybe you'll be able to catch the vibe, and if you catch the vibe, good for you. If you don't, it'll become pretty obvious pretty soon here. I kind of want to, like, slowly reveal the build style. I feel like that would be cool, and it would be, you know, like, a little different. I mean, I could, of course, just say, hey, we're gonna build buildings that look like this here, but... I mean, that's not as fun, right? So take your best guess down below. So anyways, here we go. We have a pole that starts like that. Then we could follow that up with some trap doors. Yes, we're doing the detailing as we go today, switching it up a little bit. So maybe like some trap doors down here, that would be cool. A nice strong support for the bottom of this pole. Definitely not like that though. 100% like this, that would definitely look better. Then this goes up. Now, I feel like we should probably strip these logs. That would look pretty good here. So strip logs there. These three will be stripped as well. No, arches are the king, always. I mean, bees are king, but arches are king, king. They're like double king, they're twice as good. So we'll go ahead and place some blocks there. Then we really need to make a bamboo farm so we can have some scaffolding. For now, we'll use cobblestone, perfect. There we go, an arch, it's beautiful. Now, all I need to do is replicate all of this on all of the other sides, easy. Oi, and Minecraft B, uh, please, 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 please don't wander very far. There was an update in 1.16 with bees. They should only wander up to 22 blocks away from their home to look for a flower. Uh, hopefully that is actually true though. Come on, bee, let's go. Where are you going? Dude, no, 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 no. We'll put more flowers down just to keep you busy. Come on, don't leave this area. Where do you even go? Like, what are you doing? There's no flowers over here. Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, looking good, looking good. We have made it all the way up to the top, Elites. This is a big moment. Now, we actually need to get back down. Of course, we're going to need a way up into this farm. Take a seat, because this is gonna be big. We're gonna make a bunch more trap doors, and then we're gonna make, oh, well, you know what? We don't really need to make those. We're gonna back out of that. We're gonna go over here, and we're gonna make a couple of ladders, just like this. Now, these trap doors need to be placed in a very specific spot. That spot, right here, all on top of each other, going all the way up. I think one more should probably do. Then we'll go ahead and open or close all of these trap doors. After that, ladder, 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 boom. We can climb up to the top. Now, whoa, uh, up there at the top, I wanna switch things up. We could use more spruce, but it would start to look really, really samey. You see, with the old cow farm, the one back at the starter base, my biggest complaint is how samey it looks. In my opinion, the farm, like, it looks good and all, but it also is just really, really spruce stone. I'd like to switch that up this time. How are we gonna do that? Well, I think dark oak wood might be able to help us out here. If we go ahead and place dark oak slabs up here, we'll be able to move around. Then, up on top of this thing, we'll actually build a couple homes for our bees. Now, I am just now realizing that I didn't bring, or maybe I did, maybe I have my silk couch pickaxe here. If I don't, though, I'm going to need to go back to the starter house, and if I do, I'm still going to need to go back to the starter house because I need more flowers. Right now, we have four bees total. Uh, at maximum with this farm, we could have like 12 bees, which is definitely what I'd like to have. But before we go back over there, we need a couple barrels. How many barrels? I'm thinking we're actually going to need... I think we're gonna need four. Four barrels would be good here. Why four barrels up here? Easy, extra storage and an amazing looking cap lock for these pillars. I mean, check this out. We'll put trap doors on top of these barrels too, just to finish everything off. And then when we take a step back, be ready to be amazed. I think this is gonna look amazing. I was kind of just winging it, so hopefully it does. Does it look good? Oh yes, for sure, for sure. That looks really, really good. But I think I need to swing back over to the old base now, really quick. Okay, good news, at least. I've secured the pickaxe and I've secured more flowers. Now, the bees all went inside of their house, so we need to move this thing really quick. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I needed to move that one. This one definitely needs to move, though. So, what we're gonna wanna do is set up our bee farms, our bee hives, or bee homes, whatever you wanna call them, up top. We're gonna need four campfires up there, but I definitely don't wanna use up that precious, precious oak wood. There we go, four campfires. Now, we're also going to need more homes. Three more homes, boom, there we go. So here's what I'm thinking. We could do one, two, uh, three, and then finally four, right there. Now all of these should face outward, so facing outward just like that. One, two, three, right over here, and then finally four, the one with the bees inside of it. Place down just like that. 
Now, we're gonna want some oak wood in here to fill things in, because I think oak wood matches this stuff, like, perfectly. In fact, I, I know, like, look at it, it's literally oak. So, there we go. Now, we have the campfires down below these things, so we can actually harvest them. If we don't have a campfire placed down below this thing, then when we harvest it with shears, the bees inside of it, or nearby, are going to get mad at us. That's a big problem. If the bees get mad at us, they sting us, and uh, if they sting us, then they die. Bad. So, uh, be a uh, hive nest thing. I'm sorry for picking you up. You can actually go right back down right there. So, we've got those places up there, but we definitely don't want the bees accidentally wandering into those fires. So, I think we could use maybe more trap doors to prevent that from happening. We don't have, like, a bunch of space up here, so we kind of have to be clever with what we're doing. So, I'm thinking maybe, like, trap doors all the way around here to make it look like it's, like, a, like a solid table type thing. That right there. We've got our four bee nests, and then we've got campfires below all of them, so we can harvest them when they're ready. The bees should come back and forth between this spot right here and then wherever I put the flowers down there. In between this spot and the flowers, we'll put some crops on the ground. Now, uh, one thing to note. Because we're going to have our bees flying upwards, the crops closer to this bee farm probably won't get pollinated by the bees. Little bit of a bummer. Do I care about it, though? No, not exactly. Some crops are going to be pollinated, which means some crops will be sped up. If you were going for maximum efficiency, though, definitely, definitely 100%, put your beehives down on the ground, like at crop level or one block above. So, that's stationed up there. That should be good. I'm thinking that this thing will probably need a little bit more detail there. That should probably look good. And then, it's probably time to start talking about crop farms. So, the crop farm, the field around this thing. I want it to be sizable, but not too, like, unmanageable. If it gets too big, I'm realistically just never going to harvest it. So, here's what I'm thinking. We could go one, two, three, four, five... Uh, that's a little tight still maybe maybe six seven we could go seven out from this thing and then we'll have the outer perimeter i'm thinking that seven is probably a pretty good number this feels like it's going to be big enough but also not too big so now we need to connect this with a circle uh but first i'm thinking three wide paths going into this thing so we'll have like a path in here those three blocks so then on the outside of these three blocks the wall starts so i think we'll go one two three and then we'll actually jump over to the other side just to make everything symmetrical so right here this should be seven then we have uh the three wide path again so the wall starts over here this time so we go three then we'll go two right there which means over here we'll go ahead and go two as well then after that i'm guessing we'll go uh well we'll have two here oh okay 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 i get the vision i think maybe uh, okay, I'm one block off here, but we'll have two, then two in there. Perfect. So we have three, two, 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 three. That should be a really good size. I feel like maybe. I guess we'll kind of have to fill the land in and see. And that is going to be my next job. So time for me to clear out a little bit more land around this thing and take a look at it. Then I'll be able to decide if this is too big or too small or hopefully just right. Oh, and, 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 because I have more homes, uh, once two adult bees are out of this thing, I can actually breed the bees, and then maybe they'll start claiming those things up there as their actual house, which would be perfect. All right, so, is it gonna be enough space? Um, I think so. I think this will definitely be enough space for a bee farm, and, like, enough crops to fuel this farm, but not too much to harvest. Okay, cool, so... Uh, next up, we need to figure out where we want to put our water sources, which means I should probably till all of the path blocks. Now, I need to wait for that to fill in. Over here, I'm honestly not sure if I'm really going to have a path going anywhere, but we'll put it in. And then finally, uh, on the front side. So, I went ahead and leveled the land out in here. I raised it all up. It looks good. It's going to be a lot easier to work with. But on the front side, I'm thinking maybe some sort of staircase up and down into this thing. And then maybe the same thing over here eventually. I'm planning on doing doing, uh, you know, like a bridge over to the sheep farm eventually, but then maybe like bridges over here too. That could be cool. On the backside, I heavily terraformed this hill right here. Now, unfortunately, and I'm really sad about this, I don't have any gravel, so I couldn't make any coarse dirt in here. That's what I'm going to have to come back in and get done, like in between episodes or something. To get gravel, I'm going to have to go all the way back to the other base. I did go down under here and light up the cave a little bit. I, I think it's, it's somewhere down there. I lit it up a little bit because mobs were under there being really, really annoying. 
I also started creating a little bit of variation on this wall. I'm thinking we'll have like a steep ledge here, and then over here, the ledge will be a little less steep. Maybe I'll leave some like growth in there. I'm not too sure. And then, yeah, we'll kind of just have to see what happens with the other ledges. I decided to leave this tree in here because that's really, really cool looking. But anyways, water sources. So we want to have water in here to basically water this whole area. Where's the corner? So the corner is right here. We could go in maybe one, two, and then like water right there. Would this do? One, two, three, uh, four. Yeah, yeah, four, four. Okay, I think that would do. And then three, uh, this is uh, four. Okay, we might not be able to get these spots right in here, but that should be fine. I feel like this is going to be good for the water. So let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. What is it? Four blocks out from the path. One, two, three, four. Boom. Right there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There. And then finally, over here, right there. Uh, no, no, no. Right there. Perfect. It got it the first time. Nailed it. So we're going to need water in all of those spots. And then I'm definitely going to put like a trap door on top of that so I don't fall down into the water. I have also been breeding the bees. We have more bees than we had before. I decided to move this beehive right there, the natural one, under this area. I feel like that kind of is nice in there. It's like the bees came here and made their own nest. Kind of a problem, but also kind of nice. So, uh, anyways, trap doors. We're definitely going to want to put trap doors over the water so we don't fall down into the water. Falling into the water, always annoying. Then, after this, all we really need to do is plant our crops. Now, let's talk crop efficiency. So, with the bees existing around this farm, flying over the crops, pollinating them, the efficiency will already be upped a little bit. If we wanted to, we could max things out even more by planting our crops in rows, alternating rows. So, we could plant a row of potatoes, then like a row of carrots, then a row of wheat, and we could basically repeat that. If one crop has a different type of crop planted next to it, the growth of both of those crops will actually be sped up a little bit. It's kind of strange sounding, but but that's how it works. But here's the thing, I care about efficiency, definitely. I want this farm to be good. That's why I brought bees into this farm. I want it to be productive, but at the same time, I'm not really going for maximum efficiency on this farm. Like I said earlier, if I was, I would have put the beehives on the ground or closer to it. I would also always, always plant my crops in alternating rows. With this farm, I really more so just care about getting lots and lots of wheat quickly or relatively quickly. But I also would like to have a supply of the other crops, like beetroot, potatoes, and carrots, so I can sell them to the villagers later on. So, uh, sometimes I'll plant this farm in alternating rows, and other times, I'll probably end up just filling this farm up with all of one type of crop. Most likely wheat, so we can get crazy stocked up on this stuff. Now, in some areas, we definitely do have a drop. I wouldn't want to fall off of that drop. So, fences. The fences are going to come in. We'll go ahead and place our fences kind of, like, disconnected along the edge cobblestone blocks that I placed. On the backside, where we don't really have a drop, I'm thinking maybe cobblestone slab. So we'll have this raise up just a tiny bit. Like, the smallest bit. Not a lot at all. And maybe, just maybe, because why not, we'll go ahead and put cobblestone going up on the front side over here to make things look a little bit more fancy. Same with this side over here. Eventually, I fully plan on having something coming off of this farm over here this way. Not too sure about that side and that side, though. Now, if we can keep our crops illuminated, they'll actually also grow a little bit faster, which means, oh boy, it is definitely lantern time. First things first, we need a lantern right here above the cows, keep things nice and bright in there. Then, I left some spaces, some grass blocks around the side, I think we can do a lantern there and a lantern there, on each and every side. That should probably keep the crops nice and bright, for the most part. For the staircase up and down that I mentioned, spruce. Spruce will blend in for now. I'm not sure if we'll keep the spruce here. We'll probably end up changing this to whatever we do our path with, but then again, spruce does work really well there. So I'm not too sure. For now, we'll do spruce wood. Definitely should breed these cows up and while I'm breeding things up, probably the bees too. There's definitely gotta be a couple bees in here ready to breed, including you. Come with me and then, hey, you, 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 come over here. Come on, find each other, please. Reunite, reunite your long lost pals, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to have to keep breeding the bees up. Uh, my plan, I'm going to store honeycombs and then other bree beating supplies in these barrels. So the barrels, they're for aesthetics, but they're also functional. Definitely functional. Once I get some crops going in this farm, I'll come back in here and put some hay bales. I think some honeycomb blocks on the ground definitely adds to the vibe, though. I think that looks really nice. Now, this bee nest right there will probably never get harvested, and hopefully, eventually, that bee will move, too. That would be great. This bee nest is just kind of more for, like, decorational purposes. Now, uh, last things last, finally, we need to plant crops inside of this farm. We're actually going to start with our very first beetroot of the world. I've never actually
freshly grown beetroot in this world. Probably won't grow it much, but I mean, hey, we have it, so we can go ahead and plant it for now. Now, uh, this time, I'm actually gonna go ahead and plant my crops in rows. Like I said, though, I won't always be doing this. Definitely not. If this bee could speed up, we'll catch it right there. Boom, you see that crop? Those crops, they're sped up and growed because the bee pollinated them. That is exactly the point of the bees. That's awesome. That is exciting. Awesome. Now, I should definitely sleep because I have villagers stranded out in the water. And so, there we go. The whole farm is planted. Now, this farm does definitely need a few more details. Like, under here, I need some coarse dirt, maybe some plank blocks, hay bales for sure, and then maybe, maybe a little bit more detailing on that wall over there just to make things look even better. But I feel like for today, this farm is at a really, really solid spot. I'm actually crazy happy with how this looks. Like, look at it. It's a circle. It's beautiful. Just a little bit more details in the center, and it's going to be completely golden. I think it's time for today's comment of the day today's comment of the day continues the discussion from the end of the last episode the comment was about not updating this world to 1.17 actually because 1.17 is going to be a big gigantic update the comment was actually a little bit longer than this and the rest of the comment Aaron acknowledged that 1.17 is going to be a long ways away but it'll be a big update so, at the end of the last episode, I said I probably would update this world, but also that I just didn't know. I also mentioned that it depends on if I'm still really into this world, kind of like with the last guide season. Uh, but if 1.17 is a massive, massive update, which we already know it's going to be big, but if it like entirely redoes the underground and world generation, like moves things up, moves the bedrock down or something, then we honestly might have to make a new world. I guess it'll kind of just depend. Hopefully, once snapshots start, we'll start to get a vision and then I'll know a little bit more about it. But yeah, super excited for the Caves and Cliffs update. Going to be amazing. 100% going to have to do a cave base. But for now, it leads to be enhanced efficient crop farm. Today, I'd like to send a big shout out to my patron, Lord Zenera. Thank you for the support. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next episode. This farm will look a little bit more beautiful next time. Goodbye, everyone.